You've got these kinds of asymptotes, which are at the extremities, at the far ends. And then there's another kind of asymptote. Um, vertical ones, right? Vertical asymptotes go, don't come about at the edges. They come around in the middle. They come from domain restrictions, right? So let's think about those each in turn. Horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes. You think about the horizontal asymptote in this way. Um, Think about the limit as x approaches these extreme values, right? So the limit as x approaches infinity of this thing. Like so, OK? Now, in this case, because I crafted it that way, um, this happens to be a reasonably simple example because you can see the denominator is a quadratic when you expand it out. The top is a linear function. So even though both of them grow and grow and grow as x gets bigger, the denominator is clearly going to grow much faster, um, much faster, much bigger. And so it takes over. Right? The denominator will be enormous even though this guy is big. The denominator will always win. Okay? So if the denominator is always bigger, then what, has happened, what happens to the whole number? It's going to approach 0. So I can say that. Now what this is saying here is this is y, isn't it? The limit as x approaches infinity of y equals 0. So y equals 0 is your horizontal asymptote. There it is, right there. Okay. So that's good for the horizontal asymptote. Since I'm starting to piece together information now, I'm going to slowly add it to my diagram. So on my Cartesian plane, let's put y equals 0 there. So it's sort of like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. y equals 0. Um, so there you go. So far, so good. Don't forget to label your asymptote, by the way. Now I want to work out vertical asymptotes, if there are any. How do I work those out, vertical asymptotes? Where do they come from? Say that again, Russell. OK, y equals 0. I just, OK, yeah, I'm looking for the denominator, right? So vertical asymptotes come out from a domain restriction. Um, when the denominator is zero, you're in trouble, right? You can't, you actually can't have those values. So if this becomes zero, I'm in trouble. And if this becomes zero, I'm also in trouble. So the two x values that give me problems are x equals one and x equals negative two. Good. So let's, let's go ahead and put those in. Um, one, so something like this. Oops, that's positive one. Just like before, um, you've got asymptotes on there. So tell me what they are. Label them. All right. So it, it's already factorized. We've got all our asymptotes. That's good. Now we're looking for intercepts. Just like with asymptotes, there's two kinds of intercepts. What are they? Yeah, good. So let's find them one at a time. How do I find x-intercepts? You let y equals 0. So when y equals 0, you can see the only value you're going to get that makes that happen is from the numerator being 0, right? Which in this case is x equals negative 1. So there, I'm going to put a nice big fat dot there at negative 1. There's my x-intercept. What about y-intercepts? How do I find those? Let x equal 0. So it looks to me like that's going to be 1 over negative 1 times 2. Did you see how I got that? Put 0 into all those spots. Uh, that's negative a half. How's that look? Looking all right? Those are all the intercepts. So the last piece of information is now the regions. So I'm going to grab out another color. If you're just going all in pencil, then just shade what we're going to have a look at here. Um, you can see one, two, three. These are my factors. Okay, x plus one is a factor. X minus x minus one is a factor. X plus two is a factor. So very lightly, I'm going to draw them onto here. So x plus one is going to look like this. Like so. x minus 1 is going to look like this. And then x plus 2 will look like this. OK. So you can see, by the way, 
Have a look at where my factors change sign. Do you notice they have a connection to the features I already identified? See how this is a spot where this factor changes sign. It goes from negative to positive. And it does that on either side of the asymptote. This factor here also changes sign around a feature. It changes sign around an intercept. And this one changes around an asymptote as well. Okay? So these, these steps here are all connected to each other. I've got all three factors on here. When I look at the leftmost part of the domain over here, all three factors are negative. So a negative times a negative times a negative is negative. So wherever my final graph is going to go, it has to live down here somewhere. I switch over. In between here and here, here and here, um, I've got two negatives and a positive. So two negatives times positive is a positive. In fact, what you'll notice, if you recall, these are all just going to alternate from negative to positive. The next one's going to be negative, because look, positive, positive, negative. Does that make sense? So it's going to be down here. Yeah? Remember what I'm looking for, where I switch is where the factors change sign. Okay? So from here to here, this factor change sign. Here to here, this factor change sign. My last one, one, two, three po positive factors, all positive, so I'm up here now. Okay, question. You can do that, that's fine. Um, subbing in values is actually very, very similar in terms of what you're doing to what I just did. In some ways, I just subbed in values, but I just don't know their magnitude because for me, it's whether they're up or down that's important. Okay? All right, factorized, asymptotes are there, intercepts are there, regions are there, I'm ready to go. I go from left to right. Over here, you can see I have to stay down in this corner and I'm constrained between these two asymptotes. So how would you describe this part of the shape? It sort of looks like a hyperbola, doesn't it? So, there you go. Over on the, all the way on the right hand side, I'm going to skip over to here because it's just as simple. You've got the opposite kind of shape, right? Up in the top, and again, you're constrained between these asymptotes. So you've got sort of like the reverse part, like that. The most fun and interesting bit is right here in the middle. So you've got to go from high to low. You know these two spots you've got to go through, so how would you describe the shape? It sort of looks like a cubic, doesn't it? It's not, I have to say sort of, because it isn't really a cubic. It's clearly not a cubic, but that's the closest shape we know, right? So something like this. Ta-da! Do I need any point for scale? I think I have enough information there. To, to provide scale because you can see here, um, since I've put this information on, the reason why this is important is because this graph has to be this function. It can't be, say, this function. This function here will look just like this one, except these values are, well, this value is different. Okay, does that make sense? It'll be stretched out. But I know because I've got those two intercepts, it has to be that. 